Hallelujah, my friends. Ha <laughs> ha, Mukama Yeba Zibwe. It is good to be with you all. And how I wish I could be with you in person in that church building that I so love. And, and uh, a couple of years ago uh, with Pastor James, I was able to dedicate 200 children. But you, my friends, are nation changers. You are world changers. You are history makers. And I want to greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ as fellow history makers. Amen. Amina. Mukama Yebazibwe. Hallelujah. Yes. Mukama Mulungi. Amen. Amina. Nebaza Katonda Kulwamwe. Ndimusanyufu Okuba Nawe. <laughs> Amina. And uh, I just want to say to you, my friends, Tata wo owamugulu akwagala. Yesu akwagala. Katonda akwagala. Katonda abawe omokisa. Praise the Lord. Well, I am so glad to be with you, as I just said, in Luganda. And um, Thank you, Pastor James, for putting this uh, marvelous youth conference on. It is so important, my friends. Do you know that of all the people that will ever come to faith in Jesus, about 99% of them will come to faith in Jesus before the age of 25, that is how important you are. That's how important this conference is. And it is, this conference in part, is a call to you, to mission, to preach the gospel, to, to share your faith, to share your testimony, to pray with power over your friends and those that don't know Jesus, to let them know that their sins can be forgiven, that they can have eternal life all through a repentance of life and a surrender to Jesus Christ. And perhaps some of you that are in this conference now, perhaps you've never given your life to Jesus Christ. Perhaps you think you're a Christian, but you are not right with him. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to receive him as your Lord and Savior a little bit later in this broadcast. But for now, of course, I have to remind myself to slow down uh, because Pastor James, if he's interpreting, is such a great interpreter that I forget that I still have to slow down. So let me pause right now. Let us pray together and let's ask the Lord. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to have his way in our midst. Would you join me in prayer? Father, I thank you for every single uh, young man and woman uh, that is in the building, in the sanctuary today. And we pray now that you would open the heavens, that you would visit your people, that you would open our eyes and open our ears and open our hearts to receive all that you have for us so that we can become more like you, Lord Jesus. And now, Holy Spirit, we yield this time to you and we say, teach us, change us, and transform us for the glory of the Father and of the Son. And Holy Father, may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, my friends, I just feel the love of God the Father coming through me for you and consider yourself hugged and high-fived and uh, Lord willing, I'll get back there 
as soon as I can, please pray for a way for me to get back there. I would love to be able to see all of your faces. Now, today, uh, the, the conference theme is setting our hearts on fire for Jesus. And the passage is in Luke 24, verses 13 through 35. Pastor James, thank you for uh, this topic. Thank you for the passage that you're going through. It is beautiful. It's so important. All right, everybody, are you ready to receive from the Holy Spirit? Mikwano Mugulewo Emitima Jamwe Eri Injiri Amina. All right, Luke chapter 24, beginning in verse 13. And behold, two of them were going that very day to a village named Emmaus, which was about seven miles or 11 kilometers from Jerusalem. Now, just by the way, to walk 11 kilometers would take about two hours, two, two and a half hours. So what we're going to see here is that Jesus is spending at least two hours with these disciples. And let me say, my friends, that in order to have your heart set on fire for him, you got to spend time with him. And know this, that he wants to spend time with you. That's his idea, even more than your idea. He's always calling us. He's always inviting us. Our God, our Heavenly Father, is a welcoming Heavenly Father. Our Lord is a welcoming Lord. He loves you and he cares for you. Well, uh, and they were talking with each other, verse 14, about all these things which had taken place. Jesus had been crucified. And verse 15, while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself approached and began traveling with them. Verse 16, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. Why is that? We're going to answer that question. And he said to them, what are these words which you are exchanging with one another as you're walking? What are you talking about? And they stood still looking sad. And one of them named Cleopas, I love how accurate the biblical writers are, answered and said to him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem and unaware <laughs> of the things which have happened? Now, my friends, it is, I'm laughing because it's ironic that these two men are saying, don't you know what's happening? And Jesus knows exactly what's happening. They are the ones that don't know what's happening. Are you unaware of the things which have happened here in these days? Verse 19, and he said to them, <laughs> what things? I, I can almost see him smiling when he says that. And they said to him, the things about Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and in word in the sight of God and all the people. In verse 20, and, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to the sentence of death and crucified him. Now, my friends, this is one of the most important things that have ever happened. These two issues, the crucifixion of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus, are the most important things that have ever happened in the world. It means, ultimately, that you, through faith in him, have his resurrection life in you, and you and I can have confidence that he will raise us from the dead. 
and that he, we have an eternal destiny, my friends. Well, they go on and they say in verse 21, but we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Now, what they didn't realize, what they, they had not listened carefully to Jesus when he said that he was going to the cross to redeem them from their sin. What they wanted was they wanted a military conquering Messiah who would destroy the Roman army and cause Israel to be the leading nation in the world. That is going to happen. That is what Israel's destiny is, but not then. Jesus came the first time to give, give his life a ransom for many. And, and the problem with these men is they didn't listen and they didn't seek to understand Scripture accurately. And when we do that, we miss the point and there are consequences for that. Let me share what those are in just a moment. Well, they say, indeed, besides all this, it is the third day since these things happened. Now, remember, they're, they're, they're sad. They're discouraged. But also, verse 22, some women among us, that is, fellow disciples, amazed us when they were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body, they came, saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Verse 24, And some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just exactly as the women also said, but him they did not see. Here clearly, my friends, these two men did not believe what Jesus had prophesied. Even though everything that he prophesied came to pass, they still did not believe. That is why that's the answer for the question I raised earlier, that when Jesus appeared to them, Luke tells us that their eyes were prevented from recognizing him, it's because of their hardness of heart. However, what we're going to see here is the grace of Jesus in just a moment. But he's going to say something very direct to them. All right. Verse 25. And he said to them, and this is, what, this is not what we want to hear. And we won't hear it if we will guard our hearts and make sure that we are walking in faith and trusting him, trusting that what his word says is true. O oh, foolish men and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. In other words, Jesus is saying, you should know the word of God. I've taught you the word of God. You have listened to me teach, but you have been slow to believe because your hearts are not right. And that's the thing, my friends. You and I have always got to guard our hearts from doubt and unbelief getting in there. He says, he says, O oh, foolish men and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Verse 26, was it not necessary? Was it not necessary for the Christ, the Messiah, to suffer these things? What are these things? The crucifixion. And to enter into his glory. Right there, Jesus is saying that even the Old Testament prophesied his coming crucifixion 
and his resurrection, that death could not hold him down. Hallelujah. Amen. Amina. Death could not hold him down, and it won't hold you down either. You don't know how long you have to live. I don't know how long I have to live. But one thing I know, because he lives, you and I will live with him in forever and ever and ever. No more suffering, no more sorrow, no more sickness, no more disease, no more death. That's what Revelation 21 verses 1 through 5 teaches us. And then verse 27, beginning with Moses, this goes back to Genesis, and with all the prophets. <laughs> so Jesus is teaching them in this time that he has left with them as they're, as they're walking to Emmaus. He is explaining to them from Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, Ezra, Nehemiah, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Zechariah, Malachi. I'm, I'm skipping some because we don't have time to go through all of them. He went through every single one of those. And what, what does he say? Then, beginning with Moses and with all the prophets, he explained to them, watch this, the things concerning himself in the scriptures. My friends, the focus of this message is setting our hearts on fire for Christ. And how does that happen? It happens through the word of God. You have got to get the Word of God in your heart. Let me show you something. This is old. It's a little, it's a little notepad. You see this notepad? Page after page after page. Do you know what's on here? Memory verses. Memory verses. All of these are memory verses. I have been memorizing scripture since the time I became a Christian. Look at look at how many, and this is just, if I had time, I would show you how many of these I have had over the years. Now, I've got a cell phone, and on my cell phone, let's see if I can pull it up, on my cell phone, I have more memory verses. You probably can't see them here, but I could just keep scrolling. And these are memory verses that I have spoken into my phone. And here's just one that I typed in on June 21st. For this, well, it's too long because I don't want to take all this time. Um, well, here's one. For our citizenship is in heaven from which also we eagerly wait for a Savior. Notice I'm not even looking at it. The Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform the body of our humble state into conformity with the body of his glory by the exertion of the power that he has even to subject all things to himself. Philippians 3, 20 through 21. Now, it isn't that I'm memorizing this to... It isn't that I'm memorizing scripture to show off and to act like I'm better than anybody else. It's because I love the word of God and I got to consume it. I need to know it. But also I want to be able to minister to someone who let's say they're discouraged and or let's say their loved one just died. But let's say the loved one was in Christ. I can pull out, because I've memorized it, Philippians 3, 20 through 21, and bring the life of God to them. And so as a young man, I didn't become a Christian until I was about 20 years old. 
And I began to consume the word of God in my heart and pray it and meditate on it. And that is why, number one, my friends, my heart has been set on fire for Jesus since then. And I am 61 now, and in March I'll be 62 years old, and I am more on fire for Jesus now than I ever have been. That is where we should be heading. That is something that brings glory to the Lord. And I want to bring glory to Him. I want to be His blessing to you and to everybody that I come into contact with, where do I get that desire? It's from the Word of God. That is the primary focus of this passage, my friends. And it's all about setting our hearts on fire for Him, for Jesus. Well, it is an amazing thing that that at this point, I won't read it, they urged him to stay with them. They went, they sat down to eat. He broke bread, passed it out to them. And at that point, there's the grace of God. Their eyes were open to recognize who he was and he vanished right out of their sight. You see the resurrection body, as you're gonna see in a moment, is a body, looks just like ours, but it's also a spiritual body that is not limited by time or space. Remember, he's already been in his resurrected body. So they, they're they eating with, them, uh, with him. They're, they're listening to him. They're talking to him. And yet, there's no more limitation. Well, their, their eyes were open. They recognized one another. And then we come to verse 32. And they said to one another, were not our hearts burning within us while he was speaking to us on the road, while he was explaining the scriptures to us? There it is. There's something about the word of God, my friends, that when we pray before we read it, when we pray before we listen to it, when we ask God to stir our hearts to be hungry and thirsty for his word, that is when our hearts can burn within us with joy, with excitement and passion for more of the word of God. My friends, you need the word of God just as much as you need water and food. And sunlight. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but man shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We are dependent upon the word of God for our growth. The more you get in, get the word of God in you, the stronger you'll be as long as you obey it. And the richer you will be in Christ. I'm not talking about finances. I'm talking about spiritual wealth. And every one of you can be a billionaire, spiritually speaking, in Christ. And it all comes down to getting this in your heart, renewing your mind with it, and walking it out. Amina? Now... What's amazing to, to me, because of what had happened, the Lord met with them, taught them, and it changed them and transformed them. Notice what happens in verse 33. They got up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem, seven miles, 11 kilometers at night. So within a, four, a very short time, they had walked 22 kilometers, but they went back because their hearts were still burning with zeal for Jesus. 
And notice what happens. They went back to Jerusalem and found, gathered together the 11. Remember, Judas had committed suicide. So there's 11 disciples left. And those who were with them saying, the Lord has really risen and appeared to Simon. Just can you imagine the, the excitement of realizing that death could not defeat Jesus. He had been raised from the dead and he demonstrated it to all of them just as he said he would. And they began, verse 35, to relate their experiences on the road and how he was recognized by them in the breaking of the bread. Now, you know that these two men, Cleopas and the other man, what they shared with Peter and, and the other disciples and the rest that were with them, the, the women, Mary and Martha, you know how much that must have encouraged them. Now, my friends, in the time that I have left, I have five things I want to focus on, five things that we can take away from this passage. Number one, not to know the word of God will lead to discouragement. We saw that in the lives of these two men, Cleopas and the other man. On the way to Emmaus, they were sad. And they were sad, not because they didn't know, but because their hearts were hard and they didn't believe in the resurrection, which is a powerful word of hope for us. I have hope. I have assurance that the very second that I die, I will go straight to be in the presence of the Lord and when he returns, I will be raised from the dead. I'm wearing glasses because as I'm getting older, it's harder to see. One day, I will never need glasses again. And when my body is raised, all this hair that's gone will be back. No more wrinkles, no more age spots on me. See, it's better that you have darker skin than I do because it's hard to see the age spots. You, that doesn't matter to you right now. You're way too young to even understand what that's all about. I'll be able to run again. There are a lot of things that we have to look forward to. Now, so... If we don't want to get into discouragement, we've got to feed ourselves with the word of God. And that's how we know our triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that is how we rightly represent God to others. We must know the word of God and we must interpret it carefully and accurately. Amina, one of my, I love the history of the Christian faith. And one of the greatest theologians in the history of the Christian faith lived in um, the late, he lived between um, the late 1000 and 1100. That'd be the 12th century. His name was Anselm. And he was the Archbishop of Canterbury in England. A great theologian, but a man who was on fire for Jesus. And he coined this phrase, faith seeking understanding. Faith seeking understanding. And he said, I, he said, I believe in order to understand. I believe in order to understand. In other words, 
I take the word of God as it is, all inspired by God, inerrant and infallible, I'm already going to come into it in alignment with the Lord and agree that it's accurate that what God says he will do, he will do. And then I seek to understand rather than I'm not going to, I'm not going to believe it until I fully understand it. Like a lot of people in the West who are very arrogant, that's their approach. No, Anselm had the right approach. And so not to know the word of God will lead to discouragement. Not to believe, this is the second point I want to make. Not to believe his word will lead to discouragement. They were discouraged because they did not believe what Jesus told them was going to happen, that he would be raised from the dead in three days. They didn't believe it. And Luke says they were sad. You see, my friends, we have got to be doers of the word and not hearers who deceive themselves. That's what James 122 says. One of my favorite verses, two of my favorite verses in the entire Bible that I have quoted, and I want to be careful when I say this because I don't want to exaggerate. I have quoted these two verses. Only God knows, but I'm sure that I have quoted over 40 years. I have quoted this to myself and to him and to many others, I'm sure thousands of times. It says this, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Don't try to figure it all out. In all your ways, Know him, and he will make your paths straight. Those two verses have helped me hundreds of times to stand in faith when whatever it is I'm believing God for is delayed or when things just don't seem to make sense. That is how I have learned to believe the word of God. And I learned this as a young believer. And I want to urge you, my friends, memorize scripture. Memorize it. Get it into your mind. Get it into your heart. Quote it when you're walking. Quote it when you get up. Quote it when you're going to bed. Quote it to one another. Get Know the word of God. Another one is Psalm 10, verse 9. Those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. My friends, there's another reason that, that I'm, I'm urging you to take this seriously. Because you are a history maker. You were born with a purpose and a destiny for your life. And that purpose and that destiny is to partner together with the living God. To see his influence in the lives of your friends and family and those that don't yet know Jesus. That's why that's your purpose in life. First and foremost, your purpose is to know God. To know his word and then working together with him to see lives change and transform. There's nothing more rewarding than that. You are a history maker. You have a destiny. Uganda needs Jesus and they need young men and women like you who are on fire for him. And I'm telling you that there is nothing more fulfilling than living this way. 
You don't need the world and you don't need the things of the world. You need Jesus. That's what you need. You need his word. That is what you need. You don't need anything else. May the spirit of God ruin you for the things of this world and ignite your hearts to be on fire for him. Amina mukama yebazibwe. Hallelujah. So not to know the word of God will lead to discouragement. Not to believe the word of God will lead to discouragement. But to know his word accurately will encourage us. Do you want to be encouraged? Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Now here's a verse that I know, but I don't, I haven't memorized it yet. Sorry, I need to put the light on. I need to be able to see this. Romans 15, verse 4, Paul says, For whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction. And notice the reason. So that through perseverance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. You see, there it is, my friends. When we know the word of God, it gives us hope. It encourages us. Now, to know his word, we must value it more than life itself and invest much time in it and with it as possible. One of my favorite verses in scripture is relevant to what I just said, Isaiah 66, verse 2. But to this one, God says, will I look to him who is humble and contrite of spirit and who trembles at my word. Is that you, my friend? Are you humble and contrite of spirit and do you tremble at the word of God? Then the third thing about setting our hearts on fire for Christ is this truth that Jesus speaks to us, but are we listening? Jesus visits us, but do we have our eyes open? Do we have our ears open? And are our hearts open to be sensitive enough to his presence? That only happens through the word of God and cultivating sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, practicing his presence at all times. Jesus is speaking. Jesus is drawing. But are we listening? And is our heart prepared to respond to him when he calls us? That is the way that we can set our hearts on fire for him. And then fourthly, a heart that is changed by him must tell others about him. Believers and non-believers alike. Let me just read to you from Luke 24, the very end of our passage. Luke 24 and verses 46 through 49. Remember now, Jesus is in their midst. Well, we didn't see that at, uh, yet. Let's look at verse 36. While they were telling these things, remember now, the men of Emmaus are with the eleven and with the women. All of a sudden he himself stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Because they were troubled, they thought that they were seeing a spirit. And then he eats with them. <laughs> in his resurrection body, he had fish with them. You love fish. Jesus loves fish. And so do his disciples. But he says in verse 46, Thus it is written, that the Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead the third day. And that's exactly what happened. And that repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name 
to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. Do you know I, I have taken that word seriously even as a young believer and God has opened the door for me to preach the word to all the nations. I have a radio broadcast on Voice of Hope Africa, shortwave. You can listen to it every Sunday morning and every Tuesday night. I'm going through the Gospel of Luke. Or you can listen to my podcast. It's called the Know Your Faith series. I'm going through the entire Gospel of Luke, verse by verse. I've already done 63 messages, and I'm only... Um, most of the way through Luke chapter 9. You can listen to it on Anchor. Just Google my name, Brad Abley or Pastor Brad Abley, and you can find my, um, my uh, podcast. And you can know your faith by listening to those messages. And then you can hear me on FM Kamuli every Friday night as I Go through 1 Thessalonians, which I call healthy lives, healthy churches, healthy Uganda. Now, um, I lost my train of thought there. Um, the bottom line is, uh, oh, that a heart that is changed by him must tell others about him. And so he says that repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations. And I was starting to say my radio broadcast reaches every nation in Africa twice a week and every nation in South America as well. Because of the grace of God, but because I have taken his word seriously to preach the gospel to the whole world. You may never be on the radio. You may, may never go to the nations, but you can go to your neighbor and tell your neighbor about the good news of Jesus Christ that he can save them and deliver them from their sin. You are witnesses of these things, Jesus says in verse 48. And behold, I am sending forth, verse 49, the promise of my Father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. You need the power of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and so do I. And so, a heart that is changed by Him must tell others, other believers and the unsaved. And so, my friend, how do we set our hearts to be on fire with Jesus? We need to recognize that without him, we have nothing. We have nothing. David said in Psalm 16, verses 1 and 2, You are my Lord. Besides you, I have nothing. I have no good besides you. So we need to recognize that without him we have nothing. And to set our hearts on fire for Jesus, we need to know his word, carefully interpret his word, hate unsound doctrine, and the foolishness that comes with it. We need to recognize that without him, we miss out on the destiny that he has for us to be history makers. We need to tell others about salvation in him alone. We need to stay in community with each other like you're doing right now. Proverbs 27 verse 17, iron sharpens iron, so does one man or one woman sharpen another. And then we need to live with eternity in view. But I'm, I'm out of time just about right now. I want to spend a little bit of time praying for you. 
First, I want to pray for anybody there that has never asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. You're there because someone invited you, but you're there because God wanted you there. And the only way that you can be forgiven of your sin and have eternal life, my friend, is to ask him. And I'm going to give you an opportunity right now to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and receive forgiveness of your sin. And all you need to do is pray a simple prayer, but mean it in your heart. And I'm going to pray with you now. And I'd like everybody to pray with me these words, Lord Jesus Christ. Pray with me. Lord Jesus Christ, I have not lived my life for you. But I ask you now to forgive me of my sin. I surrender my life to you from this moment on on. I belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, that you have heard my prayer. Thank you, Jesus, that you have forgiven me of my sin. Thank you, Jesus, that you are now my Lord and my Savior. Now, let me pray for you. Father, for every single person that prayed that prayer, May the power of the Holy Spirit fall down upon them. And even now among everybody, may the Spirit of the living God fall afresh on you now in Jesus' name. And then, Father, I thank you for every young man and woman that already knows you. I pray that you would protect them from the from the lust of the world, the lust of the flesh, and the boastful pride of life. Ruin us all for the things of this world and ignite our hearts to be on fire for you. Give these young men and women a vision for their lives, your vision for their lives. Let their hearts burn with your word. Let their hearts yearn to walk with you and to know you and to be available to you every single day, all day long. Protect them from the powers of darkness. Give them divine appointments. Give them boldness in the opening of their mouths that they may speak the word of God boldly as they ought to. Move mightily in their lives that they would lay hands on the sick and 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 recover and i speak healing to your bodies right now in the name of jesus be healed of every affliction or sickness or disease now in jesus name every demon that is harassing you and tormenting you i rebuke in the name of jesus depart from them in jesus name May salvation come to your home. May the Lord bring forth the finances that you need and are crying out for. May he encourage you. May he draw you to himself. All the days of your life. And may you see the miraculous move forth as you trust Jesus to lay hands on the sick and see them recovered. And may Uganda bow its knee to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. May righteousness come to your nation. May politicians and men and women in power bow their knee to the King of Kings and do what is right in the land, business people, everybody, judges, police, may they do what is right before the Lord and may the spirit of the living God draw much, many more Muslims to faith in Jesus. They're, 
that are coming to faith in Jesus through my broadcast every single week. Just this last year, we've had a thousand people call in to, to say they prayed with me to receive Jesus, and probably 30 to 40 percent of them have been Muslims. Show them the love of Jesus. You don't even need to put down Muhammad, you don't even need to put down the Quran. Just show them hope and the love of Jesus and the truth of the Word of God and let the Holy Spirit do the rest. My friends, it has been wonderful to be with you. Nimu san yufu okuba na we. I'm so happy to be with you. And I pray that the Lord will open a door for me to be with you in person next time. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace, both now and forevermore, in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This is Pastor Brad Abley. I love you. I believe in you. God believes in you. Tata wo owo mugulu akwagala. Amina.